Okay, this is part two, and this is really reviewing the assignment that was due on Friday, this worksheet, Sentences, Simple, Compound, or Complex. And so I wanted to go over this and show you how it should look. Um, those of you that have been here before, you have learned a system of bracketing and putting parentheses, independent and dependent clauses. And what I want you to know is that this year, I'm really not going to grade you on how you bracket. What I am going to grade you on is your ability to look at a sentence and tell whether it's simple, compound, or complex. And the first thing that I would suggest when you look at a sentence, let's look at number two, is that you find the conjunction. You've got that conjunction template that I gave you that lists the conjunctions. And here I know that and is a coordinating conjunction. What I also need to know is, does is it being used to join clauses? Because it could join phrases and words. So I circle my conjunction and then I look before it. Is there subject verb pair? Yes, Jennifer liked, there's subject verb. Could this stand alone? Jennifer liked William's friend? Yep, that's independent clause. Is there a subject verb after it? Yes, you liked. Could this stand alone? You also liked his cousin? Yes. So. We've got two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction. This is a compound sentence, okay? Okay, now I really hate how this shows up, but let's look at number three. I'll come a little bit closer. Um, the big brown dog ran after the blue and red ball. So you might look at this and go, oh, yeah, there's a coordinating conjunction. And you might circle that and go, this is a compound sentence. But you always have to see, is it joining a clauses? words or phrases. So, is there a subject verb pair in front of this? Yes. Dog ran. Okay, so there is a subject verb pair before and. Is there a subject verb pair after and? No, it's red ball. And when I look at this sentence, I can tell the subject is dog, the verb is ran, and I can see that after the blue and red ball, these Blue and red are just adjectives describing the object of the preposition. So this is one independent clause. This is a simple sentence. Okay, so let's look at this. Here I find a depend, I'm sorry, a subordinating conjunction after. And so I look before, is there a subject for a pair? Yes, James and Eve. We have um, two subjects, road, and then we have they ate. So that means I circle this as a conjunction because there's a subject verb pair before and a subject verb pair after. So James and Eve rode their bicycles. Can that stand alone? Yes, it's an independent clause. After they ate lunch, can that stand alone? No, that's a dependent clause. So this is a complex sentence, okay? So let's look at the rest of these. Number five is simple. Number six um, is compound. Number seven is compound. Number eight, that's complex. This time our subordinating conjunction comes in the, at the beginning of the sentence. And so I just wanna see, is there a subject for a pair that comes with it? Yes, clean road. Is there another subject verb pair? Yes, she gave. And so I've got two subject verb pairs. This is a subordinating conjunction. Can this stand alone before the queen wrote in the parade? No, that's a dependent clause. She gave a speech. Does that stand alone? Yes, that's an independent clause. So what I wanna point out about number eight is even though your dependent clause comes first, when you go over to diagramming it, um, your dependent clause, even though it went first, always comes beneath your independent clause. So she gave what speech? Okay. When did she give the speech? Before, which is going to be on the dotted line when it's subordinating, connecting your verbs. Queen road. Okay. So let's come back over here. Um, nine is a simple sentence, one independent clause, and 10 is a compound sentence. 
So, and then we can look at this key for diagramming. If you want to pause, you can, you can look at this and see if you've got the same answers. But the thing I want to point out is that number two is a compound sentence. Your two independent clauses always go on the same plane and your coordinating conjunction goes on a dotted line. Okay. When it's a complex sentence, your dependent clause always comes underneath the independent clause. And here we had a, um, a rocket ship because we have two subjects, James and Eve, rode bicycles. Um, when did they ride bicycles? Um, before lunch, after lunch. So you're gonna connect verb to verb and put your subordinating conjunction on that dotted line. I think these are pretty straightforward. Six is compound, so the two independent clauses are on the same plane. We already went over eight. And then let's look at 10. This one's a little bit weird because we have two direct objects, pan and plate, and we need to connect it to our other independent clause. So I just closed the rocket ship and drew a dotted line for the coordinating conjunction, but. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you, this is so important. We're really gonna start pressing into complex sentences and next unit go into compound complex. So if you have questions about this, and I did already check your homework about this, um, please, please reach out to me and schedule some time.